In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. We gather together on Thursday night. There's something about Thursdays that is exceptionally ordinary. Just a Thursday. Sundays are special in ways, Saturdays, Fridays. Wednesdays, halfway Thursday. There's really nothing particularly special about a Thursday. But today is incredibly special. And yet for reasons that I think, hope it will surprise you. We gather together here at the end of this day, in the beginning of a new day, and today was anything but ordinary. Every single one of us went through a day today that was incredibly unique even from the rest of our days. Not just different from each other. Your Thursday, this Thursday, was different than your last Thursday, which was different from yesterday and different from tomorrow. You encountered today all kinds of unique things. I want to focus on the difficulties. Think about your difficulties today. For some of you, today was an incredibly difficult day. Difficulties of health, whether your own or people you love. Difficulties in relationships. Difficulties of your own attitude and feelings. Difficulties between you and all the people around you, your family members, co-workers, neighbors, whoever. The person in front of you in line at the store. The person driving in front of you. And today we all faced unique challenges some of which we may face again, some of which we may not. But of all the challenges you face today, you had challenges, both individually, your family and those around you had challenges. Our neighborhoods had challenges. Our state had challenges. Our country faces challenges. The whole world faces difficulties all just today, let alone the fact that we had yesterdays at every level I just mentioned, and the day before, all the way back to the beginning of time, day after day of unique challenges and difficulties. And if you take all of those countless challenges and struggles and difficulties and temptations, failures, fears, every one of those that has ever been and every one of those that will ever be, all of them were solved by God. And how did he solve them? We could point back to all kinds of moments. Maybe it's the moment that he sent the Holy Spirit down upon the apostles at Pentecost and empowered them with the Spirit of God himself. Maybe in the middle of Lent we think about Pascha, the resurrection, when he conquered death once and for all. Very important moment, obviously. Maybe it was the moment on the cross when he submitted and gave up the spirit. Maybe it was the day he was born that we'll celebrate, God willing, nine months from today. It's not a coincidence. At the Feast of Christmas. Maybe it was his theophany when he was revealed to the world and the voice of the Father said, this is my beloved Son. Every one of those could be a moment and were all moments in which God solved every problem of every person at every place at every time. But if you had to pick one moment out of all of those moments where you could say, if you had to pick, it's really impossible, but you had to pick one, that that was the moment every one of those problems were solved. Not just your problems today, but yours tomorrow and yesterday and all the other problems. That day would be today. This feast. The Annunciation, the proclamation of good news. 
when the Archangel Gabriel, as we see in the icon to your left, came from heaven to Nazareth. You don't understand necessarily the irony of that phrase. Nazareth was a backwater town, not close to the centers of power. Think about going from heaven to Nazareth, the ultimate condescension to go from the heights of heaven, which cannot be uh, numbered or pointed to, down to this little dusty little town, to a young teenage girl. And the message that he brought her is the message that does solve every one of our problems. He looked at her into her eyes and said, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. And at that moment, everything changed. Everything. Mankind changed. Because when the archangel spoke those words to her, something that had never happened before happened, and that could only happen once. The Creator became part of the creation. The only begotten Son of God, the Word of God, the Word that God spoke creation into being, went from being God's eternal Son and without changing, and without losing anything of that divinity, becomes us, becomes one of us, becomes incarnate. He took on and put on flesh and became what we call today an embryo or a fetus in the womb of the Virgin Mary. And the best way he could describe that was to say, the Lord is with you. No matter what problems you are facing, the ones you thought about, just even from this ordinary Thursdays, there is not one that is not solved at that moment. When God doesn't just look upon us, he doesn't just hear us and listen to us, he doesn't just converse with us anymore, he joins us. He becomes one of us. He becomes so close to us that if you had to point to where is God at some place you could point, you'd point to the womb of that young virgin the most holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. And at that moment, every problem from every person at every age and every place was solved, or at least the solution was offered. Because what problem that you encounter today or any day is not overcome if we accept that invitation to understand that God is now with us. Not again just to look at us from afar and speak and communicate to us, but to be with us at the heart of where we are, at the heart of our joys and celebrations, absolutely. But even in the depths of our difficulties, we heard in today's epistle, I will rely on him, and again, lo, I and the children whom God hath given me. Since then the children have become partakers in the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise partook of both things, and then we hear the ultimate reason why, that through death he might destroy him who has the power of death. Even death, our worst enemy, the thing that we fear the most, was defeated. Yes, on the cross, on the tomb, all of that, but that began today. We're going to hear over and over in the hymn that we sang last night at the Vespers for this feast that today is the beginning of our salvation. It starts now. If there was one moment you could point to and say, that's when it happened, it's this feast. And it is good news. The word annunciation means the good news. It's the same word as the gospel. So how does that solve all of our problems? That solution is not now vague. It is not now uncertain. It isn't even just hoped for in the future. 
As I said to you before, I'll say again, it is now in the past. It happened. And in the language of the church, we say today to show how powerful what happened over 2,000 years ago that's still being effective and empowering us today. Today is the beginning of our salvation. Yes, because on this day, the archangel came to the Virgin Mary and announced that she would become the bearer of the Son of God. That in her womb, God himself dwelt bodily. That's the meaning of the icon you see above the altar in the apse of the church. That she opened her arms and opened her heart and welcomed in the God of all to be born and shown forth from her. That's why Christ is seated where he is. But then for every problem and every challenge, and yes, every joy, where is God? We don't have to wonder. We don't have to doubt. Even if we choose that, we don't have to. Because he came and he joined. And he partook of everything that we are. We heard St. Paul tell us, it behooved him to be in the likeness of his brethren in all things, that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the things pertaining to God, for the atonement of the sins of the people. For in that he has suffered, listen carefully, and was himself tempted, he is able also to help those who are tempted. We don't have to wonder anymore, does God understand? He doesn't understand because he's all-knowing, not just because of that. He understands because he himself went through it. Name in your head the problems you encounter today or any day. Christ encountered them all. The only difference was he knows who he is. He knows why he's here. He knows the power he has. And he doesn't wonder what's going to happen, what's the effect going to be. He knows. And because he knows what all the, power, the problems are, he understands. And starting today, we can live differently than any other day. There can be no more ordinary day for us if we choose. Because on this day, the angel said to her, the Lord is with you. And when he joined her and became one of us, he joined us. I dare you to try to find a problem that God didn't already solve. The question is not whether he solved it. The question is whether we will receive the solution. That's the only unknown left. We don't have to wonder what's God going to do, what's the effect going to be, all that questioning passed. The only question is, what will we do? Will we receive it in the joy in which it was given to us? We can. And we can because of this day. No matter what the difficulty is, no matter how horrific it might seem, it has been solved in every sense of that word. So on this day, that is the day that we hear the commandment over and over to rejoice. Let's rejoice. We, for this brief shining moment, shed the darkness of Lent because the brightness of this feast, as we said yesterday, overpowers any darkness. And it can overpower any darkness of any problem any one of us has ever had, has now, and can ever have. So let's make that our life's work. Not to wonder, we've wondered enough. Not to worry, we've done enough of that. But to receive and to accept and to say, as she said to the archangel, Behold, let it be done to me according to your word. That's her response. And with our faith, that can be our response, no matter what we face. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.